a radar with a detection range of up to 150 kilometers, was deployed in the area of western Euphrates, where there is a strong concentration of pro-Iranian factions and groups supported by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC. The information was also confirmed by observers from the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights SOAR, which is based in London. According to sources, the radar station is in the area of Hashid. We know from military sources that this area is known for its strong concentration of Iranian forces. They are most concentrated in the city of Al Maidan, located in the province of Deir ez Zor, which has been attacked in recent months by both the US and Israeli air forces. Russian sources claim that the Iranians have deployed the Russian radar station Kasta 2E2. This is a relatively new radar, as it was officially presented at the Military Exhibition MAX 2015 in Moscow. The radar consists of three vehicles, one is the radar station itself, which can deploy a pylon up to 50 meters high, the second is a control station, and the third carries ancillary equipment. The radar can track up to 50 targets simultaneously and unfolds relatively quickly, up to 20 minutes. The area around the city of Al Maidan, where the radar was located, is strategically and topographically important, as it is surrounded by both Iranian pro-fighters and opposition forces against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, as well as Russian troops. The civil war in Syria The Syrian civil war has been going on for almost a decade. Attempts by movements such as the Syrian Democratic Forces to overthrow Syrian President Bashar al-Assad have failed. The Syrian Democratic Forces are armed by allies in the United States, while the Syrian army is armed mainly by Russia. Russia is the only country officially invited to Syria by President Bashar al-Assad. In 2017, the United States launched a massive missile strike on Bashar al-Assad's forces after a report emerged that the Syrian president had used chemical weapons to attack his people in the country. Syria and Russia deny such actions. During his tenure, U.S. President Donald Trump decided to withdraw much of U.S. troops from Syria, leaving several troops to guard Syria's oil fields on the pretext of falling into the hands of Islamic State. With the withdrawal of the United States Turkey comes to the fore, declaring it necessary to deal with the Kurds and the PKK movement in the northern part of the country, which borders Turkey. That is why Erdogan is sending troops in an attempt to build a stable and secure 30 km zone between Syria and Turkey, which will prevent future terrorist attacks on Turkish territory, as it is. Ceasefire in February 2020, Turkey lost at least 62 troops killed in Syria. Nearly 100 soldiers were wounded, Syrian-backed forces destroyed dozens of Turkish armored vehicles, and more than 10 drones, including drones, were shot down. Washington has repeatedly accused Moscow of involvement in the deaths of Turkish soldiers, Russia rejects these allegations. In early March 2020, the presidents of Russia and Turkey, Vladimir Putin and Recep Tayyip Erdogan, agreed that a ceasefire came into force in the Idlib de-escalation zone. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad later said that, if the US and Turkish military did not leave the country, Damascus would use military power. The reason for the Russian-Turkish negotiations was a sharp aggravation of the situation in Idlib, where in January, a large-scale offensive by the Syrian army against the positions of the armed opposition and terrorists began. Government forces recaptured nearly half of the Idlib de-escalation zone and left behind several Turkish observation posts. 
After that, Ankara sharply increased its military contingent in the region and launched the Operation Spring Shield to push the Syrian troops. Militants are loyal to Ankara and support Turkey. A more noteworthy detail is that those F-35s may have been detected using the radar models produced for the Russian army. According to official reports, Russia sent Iran two Gata radar systems in 2014 and 2015 that were subsequently deployed in the provinces of Semnan and Khuzestan. These radars are designed as an export product and thus have lower characteristics compared with the models for use in Russia. Yet there have also been reports suggesting Iran may also be in possession of radar stations modified for use by the Russian army. Those stations have reportedly been deployed in Fars province west of Shiraz, as well as in Kurdistan province north of Bijer. One way or another, the lifting of the arms embargo presents a challenge for Russia's military cooperation with Iran. There is an obvious tension between Moscow being interested in supplying Iran with defense equipment and Tehran's wish to purchase offensive arms.